Hello and welcome to this Affinity Photo tutorial and at the outset may I just say this is also relevant to Affinity Designer and Affinity Publisher because they basically save and export in the same way. Now this all started from a Facebook group Affinity Photo Tutorials where Alison Chambers wanted some help with understanding how to save or the differences between saving and exporting. Now, she obviously works on a Mac computer um, which I don't have, never used and I really cannot 100% say to you this is where the commands are in the Mac version of Affinity Photo or the, how the file system works in a Mac but I find it very hard to believe that the difference between how Macs save files is different to how a PC save files so I'll do mine on a PC and hopefully Alison and any other beginner can then work out how to adapt it for a Mac which I freely admit I know nothing about so if you wanted to save an image let me shut these down you could for example add a new file to your desktop now on a, on a PC I could right click come to new and new folder and it would place that folder on the desktop you can also make a new folder or on a Mac you can save images to the pictures folder I'm guessing it's probably something similar on on a Mac but if you want to make a new folder which I personally would recommend you, you just need to find somewhere to save it and if like me you have multiple drives um, you decide where you want to put it on a PC the main drive is the C drive and this is where you know, Windows is based uh, all the files for Windows is here but I like to save my images elsewhere so I'm going to pick my G drive and I'm just going to make a new folder so I come up here to click new folder and then we just need to give it a name so I'm just going to call this affinity test just so I know what it is but I mean you could call it whatever you want you call it my pictures or whatever or if your ca camera is a Canon for example you might want to call it Canon images or Nikon images or whatever so what I'm also going to do I'm going to go into that folder and I'm going to make a folder within this one I've just made and I'm just going to call this for the sake of arguments images and I'm going to give it today's date which is the 23rd 1st of the 11th 2020. So I could then add other folders that are dated so I know where the images are that I'm saving to. So once we've we've made those preparations and I come back to Affinity Photo. Now I've got this image off of from the stock tab in Unsp from Unsplash. And as you can see I've made a couple of adjustment levels and I've also added a sort of sharpening level at the top just to show the differences you know, when it comes to saving. Now there are two ways to save. You can do the save or save as which basically do the same thing or you can use export and those options are found in the file menu so you've got save and save as and export. We're going to look at save as and save first of all save as would be the the first time that you save the file and then if you then do some more edits and you want to save where you've got to next you can just use save and it will just save it automatically with the same name but if you then use save as if you then go through the process again of you know, finding where your files are and naming it again if you want to rename it something different but if you don't want to rename it or alter where it was saved before just use save 
or save as if you want to use a new position to save it to or a new name to save it to. Now using either of these two saves all the information that you have here. So it will save the original, any adjustments and it will save with the file name I think it's .af photo or if it's designer I think it's AF designer and publisher is AF publisher or pub doesn't matter which program you're using it will save it with its own name but technically all three programs can open the same file it's the same file just given a slightly different name so I'm going to go to save as and then I just need to navigate to where I saved or made that file so I'm going to go to G and affinity test the file that's today's date and then you just need as you can see it's at, at the moment it's called untitled.afphoto so I'm just going to call this test and when I click save it will automatically add the AF photo name on the end so save wait for it to do its job and if I come to this folder again, in there we have test.af photo. So that is one way to save. So what I will do is I will close that down and open it again by clicking on this image here. And you can see it's opened it again and like I said it will keep all the layers and any edits that you have made when you saved it now this is a good thing if like you're going to make future edits or you want to come back at another date and make future edits but if you finished editing and you don't want to save with all this information um, which is a good thing because if you save it as an AF photo file it is a much bigger file let's have a look how big this is this is 13.2 megabytes so that is all this relevant information that it needs to bring back when you open the file so if you've finished editing and you want to save this image but just this image this is when you use the export option so you come down to export and you have all the different various me um, file types that you can save this as the most obvious ones that you will use would be JPEG PNG and TIFF they're the like, three main image files but you could save it as a PDF and a lot of these other ones which I don't really know too much about um, but like I said TIFF, JPEG and PNG are probably your, your main three go-to file types and JPEG would be the main file type that most people use so once you've decided the quality of it you want to save it as because as, as it says down here the estimated file size will be 11.34 and as if I remember correctly the file size in the AF photo was 13 megabytes or 13 plus mega megabytes but if you lower the quality at the moment it's 100% quality but I mean if you're just going to put the picture on the internet it doesn't necessarily have to be 100% quality you could probably come down and say let's try 75 it's now calculating that and see that it has drastically reduced the file size to 2.29 megabytes from its original 11 I think it was 11.34 megabytes so reducing the quality of the image which is okay to do on the internet because the internet reduces the quality anyway um, and then you click export and then it will come up asking you, or it does on a PC anyway it comes up and asks you where you want to save it to so then it's just a case of 
going navigating to where you've saved this and, and as you can see it's now I mean I could rename this but it's it's using the same name that I saved before but this time it's saving it as a .jpg or .jpg file and I click save Right now, too. So I will close that down again. Um, and when you do close it down, it will come up and say, Do you want to um, make any changes? Now, in this case, the only change I've made is that I've saved it, I've not made any other changes. So I don't want to make any uh, save it. But if I clicked yes, it would save it as the AF file where and it will save it in the position that I previously saved this particular file so in this case it wouldn't ask uh, where you want to save it it will just save it where you've done it before but as the AF photo file not as the JPEG file so I'll click no if I come back to my folder as you can see I've got the two versions of this file and if I change this to large icons you can see that this is the JPEG version this is the AF photo version and the difference in size is this, that's 13.2 and this one is 11.3 and if I click on the JPEG one to open it in Affinity Photo it just brings back that image there's no layers I mean, I can still re-edit it. I can, you know, add extra edits now, but I can't make any other alterations because those layers are no longer available. The only way to get the layers is to save it as an AF photo file, in which case you would then get the layers. So, if you export it, it don't get the layers, but if you use Save As, it will save with the layers. And one thing I did forget to mention at the beginning, but I'll mention it now, is if you had saved this uh, before, the I, like I had done, um, and you got all these alterations, you will have a history of all the steps that you made in the editing. And before you save, you could come to click History with Document. This will, again, make the file size slightly bigger, but if you do that, and then you come to save as, when you bring it back in next time, your history will also come back. Um, so you can go back a few steps or remind yourself what you did, you know, what layers you may have added and what adjustments you may have added. Um, but that's more of an extreme case when you do lots and lots of edits and you may forget what you did, when you did it and how you did it. So having the history helps, but like I said, it will make the file size much bigger than if you don't save with the history. So I hope this works very similar on a Mac, and I hope that helps Alison. So thank you for watching, and goodbye.